салфетка такой, который в куше. Hello, everyone. Sunday, I realize you're here. Sorry for being late a little bit today. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. A bit late. How are you all doing today? Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Nice to see all of you. Well, since we're a little bit late, let's go ahead and share the link and share the conversation. Please go to your share button. Let's go and share the message and let's be ready to take off this morning. And we still keep on talking about how do we, how do we discover our calling, our gift and calling. How do we discover our gift and calling? So... Um, Today's topic is, if you have shared the link, please go and share the link first. Go share the link, go share the, the message. And uh, another key today of how to discover who you are, what you're calling is. So the topic of today is your calling could be in what you often think, talk, read and hear about. So your calling could be in what you often think, talk, read, and hear about. What do you like to listen to? What do you like to hear about? You just enjoy talking about this topic, that's all. You just enjoy talking about it. You enjoy hearing it. You enjoy listening more and more to it. What is it? What topics are those that really captivate you? They captivate your hearing, captivate your attention. They, you just you, you are not you are never ever tired of listening and hearing more and more about these things. What is that topic? Well, that might be a way of God telling you that's your calling. That's your calling. Is there anything apart from some things you like to hear and like to listen to? Is there anything you like to read about? Any topic? Any particular topic that entices you? That um, attracts you? What are those topics that attract you? What are those topics that you are interested in reading about? What are the things that facilitate, uh, f f uh, fascinate you in reading? You know, there are some people, there are people that would never read about some topics. But there are some people that want to read only about medicine. You want to read everything about medicine. And you want to hear people talk about medicine, 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 medicine. But for some people... That doesn't hold any water. They don't even, they never ever want to hear anything about medicine. They never ever want to read anything about it. But you, you want to read about medicine. You want to hear about medicine. Well, is that telling you anything? Yeah, that should let you know that there is something there more than the ordinary. There is, there is something there more than the ordinary. That there is something that God wants to tell you. And the reason why you will always feel enticed to a particular thing and the reason why you will always feel stimulated by that particular topic is because that topic is indwelt in you. You know, God has put our callings and our destiny inside of us. It is dwelling inside of us. So we don't look, need to look for it from the moon or from outside. No, we have that, that calling already in us. It's already inert in us. So when you, even if you've never heard about it before, once you begin to hear about it, and there is something that responses from inside of you. It's a response. So it is your calling that is inside of you that responds to what is hearing. And it wants to hear more about it. It wants to hear more about it. And that's why you want to hear. So that's why what you like to hear about is a call. It's an appeal to the destiny that is already inert in you, that is already buried in you, that is already concealed in you. So in your creation, God opened you up and put in you the assignment that you are supposed to carry out on the earth. God opened you up and concealed in you the destiny that he has for you, that he has for you on the earth. So that destiny is is what 
is looking for expression. That destiny is looking for expression one way or the other. And one of the ways that it could better be expressed is when it hears something talking about that destiny that is already in you. So it responds to it. That destiny could be better uh, revealed and exposed when somebody begins to, you know, talk about it or when you keep on hearing about it or you want to hear more about it, you want to read more about it, you want to talk more about it. That is an expression of that destiny that is in you. Oh, well, I hear, hear I'm, I'm noticing something that there is a certain Tina Steven that is having a birthday today. So I want to join the congratulatory messages that are coming. I want to join and wish my sister Tina a happy birthday and we release the grace of God upon you, the blessings of God, that God's favor will descend upon you like never before and that with all these changes and all these messages you are listening to, that your life will be so transformed to the, what exactly what God wants and wishes to say, that uh, you will never be the same again, that your life will just take another, on another new dimension, another new height uh, of increase, of grace, of qualitative growth and, uh, and success. So happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. So we keep on, uh, we keep continuing the topic. We keep on talking about our topic today, which is your calling is concealed in you. And one of the ways for you to reveal and unveil that calling is for you to ask yourself the question, what is it that I will normally and I often think about? What are your thoughts occupied with? I'm not talking about the mundane things like the, you know, problems and challenges that are coming from outside that are, you know, bothering you. I'm not talking about the troubles, concerns of what to eat, what to drink. Those are not the kind of thing I'm talking about. But I'm talking about the serious topics of life, serious issues of life that you would like to address. The issues, apart from what to drink and what to eat, of course, apart from the survival questions, I mean, but questions that think, that talk, that lead you into uh, engagement, into engaging yourself, into engaging your thoughts, into thinking about what, what you would have liked to be engaged in, where you would like to add value to life and to others. You know, when we're talking about what the calling, we're not talking about the subjects or things that you do that just appeal or meet your own personal needs. Calling is not about self selfishness. Calling is not about egocentrism. And calling is not about me and I and mine. Calling should not be just about providing for yourself or meeting your own needs or resolving your own problem. Calling should be more than that. Calling should go beyond you. Calling is something that you are willing and you desire to do, not just for yourself, but you do want to do for others and for God. So, calling is, if, for example, if, if people like um, Mercedes-Benz or Ford as, oh, have only thought about themselves and their families, can you imagine? We, none of us would have heard of Mercedes-Benz today. None of us would have heard of Ford today. Because, but because they thought, about, they thought beyond themselves. They didn't just think about providing car for themselves and for their family members. But they thought about how to improve the life of humanity as a, as, at large. So that desire to make life better for humanity is what is calling. So calling always has something to do beyond yourself. Calling always has something to do for other people, not just for yourself. So if you are still only thinking, if all these questions that you are thinking about are only revolving around you and yours, you and your family, then that's not calling. That is egocentrism. That's selfishness. So when you really want to talk about calling, you want to find out what is it that you really want to do to affect other people, to bless other people, and to, you know, to touch the lives of more people than you and your family. Uh, so that is what calling is. Sorry. 
Someone here is asking, what is my mail? What is my mail? I would like to have your mail. I give my mail out every time. My mail is pastor at God Embassy. God Embassy. Not God's Embassy, but God Embassy. Pastor at GodEmbassy.org. Pastor at God Embassy. One word. God Embassy. Dot org. Yep. And uh, so, you know, one of the pointers for us to know who we are, what our callings are, is to sit down and do an inventory of yourself and look into yourself, study yourself, and find out what are the things that I like to think about. What are the things that, not that they bother you so much, but the things that entice your interest, the things that you really like to. No, you know, number, uh, num, uh, you know, to think about, to complicate, to complicate, uh, to meditate about the things that you like to, you know, to just engage your mind with, and especially those things have to do with bringing good to people, to God, to humanity, and to yourself. But it's not just thinking about what to do to get yourself good salary or something like that. That is still selfishness. But calling is about extending yourself and your life to be a blessing to other people beyond and besides yourself. Okay, so calling is what you find yourself often think about. Calling also could be what you find yourself often, often talk about. You always see yourself engaged in talking about this topic. That could be connected to your calling. You know, the reason why I was given the example of medicine. The reason why you never ever talk about medicine and it doesn't even cross your mind is because it does, it's not living in you. It's not part of the thing that is really living in you that you need to discover. But for other people, the reason why uh, they are talking about it all the time and they cannot think about any other thing is because that is what they are, their destiny is connected with. That's what their destiny is connected with. But apart from talking and thinking, you also see that you want to read a certain subject. There is a certain subject that is close to your heart that you always want to read about, that you are looking for materials about. That could be because that is the topic that address, that, uh, that is closer to your heart. That is the topic that is that is close to your heart. That is the topic that you want to address. That is the topic that uh, you know that God wants you to deal with. You see, what I'm saying is that there are some things that are already in you. When we are born and sent to this world, God put a certain calling, a certain no destiny in you, and anything that will remind or read you or, or will you know reflect that destiny, your nature will naturally gravitate towards it. Your inner man, your desire, your spirit, even without you understanding why. You might not even understand why. You say, Oh, why? Why am I, I don't, I, I want to do, hear about this all the time. Why is it that I want to read about this all the time? Why, why is it, you know, I just want to study about this all the time. You don't know why, but the reason is inside of you. The reason is, the reason is hidden inside of you. It is the calling that is in you that knows the why. It is the destiny that God has put in you that knows the why. And that destiny will always want to reach out to anything that wants to give him or, or I mean, or that wants to give it expression. It's just like saying, if you see, you know, like when I was a small guy, I was a small boy. We used to, one, I, I used to see some of my friends keep birds. They go and set traps for birds, and uh, <laughs> and as a young kid, I used to be jealous of them. I used to say, oh wow, and they have a cage, and some parents even used to buy a cage, a small cage as a gift for for their uh, they really used to have a cage for their and, and and buy a little bird for their for their kids on their birthday or something like that and i used to say oh wow you know i like this idea why don't i also join the trail why don't i just find a way of getting some bird for myself so i learned how to, i learned the skill on how to trap the birds and how to cage them and uh, but I will catch some certain bird and put them in the cage. But what always frustrated me was that these things are always flying away. They're always running away. <laughs> uh, 
And I was always surprised. Ah, why are these things always running away? But I'm going to be taking care of you now. I'm going to be giving you what to eat every day. I'm going to be giving you some seeds and some uh, weed and some, you know, some uh, seeds and things like that. I, I want to care for this bird. Why is he running away? I mean, I mean, it's good here. I mean, you have a whole house to yourself. <laughs> why should the air? Yeah, why should the bird run away? So you know, after trying out so many times, and all the birds kept on running away and flying away. You know, I just decided to give up. I just said, you know what? I'm not interested in this game anymore. I don't want to keep any birds. And that's, that was my that was my departure from domestic animal. You know, up to now, even my children sometimes they want to have. They want to say, Dad, should we have domestic animal or should we have some pets? Some pets in the house. I said, no, I'm not interested. You know, I lost interest in pets forever. <laughs> because not, I, I tried it out, not just with the birds. I tried it out with the rats, you know. I, I'm a, a village boy. So, so for some of you uh, Europeans, you might not understand this. But I used to go and get some rats as well. Not the rat in the house, not the house right rat, but the rat and, you know, small animal rat from the bush, the bush rat. I would go and get them and then keep them also in a cage in the house. And then I discovered that all these rats as well, they, be, they started behaving like, like the birds. And the rats also are looking for a way to escape. They are looking for a way to escape. And each time I get the rats and I think that I'm okay now, and they will never escape. One day I wake up in the morning and the rats are gone too. They have escaped. So wh what I discover is that uh, the reason why I'm, why, why I'm telling you this story is because the, both the bird and the rat, they are looking for their natural abode. They are looking for their natural expression. They are looking for their natural environment. So the same thing with you. You and I have what is already indwelt in us, what is already inert in us, what is already indwelt in us. The things that are already buried in us, it's our nature. It's, it's what nature, what God has put in our nature for us to become. So everything in your nature is expressing your calling. Everything in your nature is reminding you of your destiny. Just like that bird, the, it is the nature of the bird to fly. It is not the nature of the bird to sit down. It is not the calling of the... Of the <laughs> <laughs> it is not the uh, calling of the bird to, to be in the cage. I mean, it's not natural for a bird to be caged. That's the way you will see yourself when you are not in your natural environment, when you are not in your natural uh, expression, when you are not doing what you are supposed to do, when it's not, you know, when you are studying something that is not what is indwelled in you, that is not in you, when you are you know, going to school, to get education for something that is not related to who you are. You know, when you, you always see yourself fascinated and drawn to something else. And the thing that you are drawn to will be the things that are already into it in you. So, so our, 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 our calling is like that. Our calling is buried in us. And they will draw us sooner or later. They, they, act, they, they, they act as a magnet. You know, you know the way magnet, magnetic forces act. You, you have to have a magnet inside of you. And when it sees a similar magnet, a magnetic force like that, it draws in, it, it, to, to, to it. So that's the way it is. So just like that magnet is in you, and there is a magnet of your calling that is in you. And anything that has the substance of that magnet will always be attracted, will always automatically draw you. It will pull you to itself. So just like... Uh, the bird, why are the birds always flying away? The birds are flying away because freedom, air, is their expression. The, you know, the, 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 the atmosphere, the, the natural air, you know, the freedom, the liberty of the sky is where the, the bird finds expression. It's the natural place of abode. It's the natural condition, environment for the birds. So when the birds are, are you know, are finding a little opportunity to fly away, they want to fly away because that is their, that is what is in all their nature expresses that. That is what is in them. That is what is built in them. So when they, whenever they see the liberty, the freedom, they just take advantage of it and fly with naturally. They don't even need to struggle for it. They don't even need to, you know, look for it. They just do it naturally. 
So that is what you that's what happens to you as well when you when you see something that is deep collecting to deep. That's what the Bible says, the way the Bible says it. The deep that is in you will call forth another deep. And the deep that is outside of you will express and call out to the deep that is inside of you. So that's why you if you want to know why you want to listen to that particular thing all the time or to those that particular topic. The reason you want to always, you feel like always listening to that particular topic is because of what I just said. It's because of your, you know, of the indwelt uh, magnet, uh, magnetism that is in you, the, 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 the indwelt force, uh, nature uh, of that calling, the, the relative, relative, I mean, the relativity, I mean, the, sorry, the relationship and the relation between your calling and that thing you want to listen to is what makes you to want to hear that particular thing. And why is it that you only want to be talking about that, this or that topic, this or that topic? It's because that is what is in you. That is the nature. And that is the calling. That is the destiny that God has already buried in you. So he's looking for expression. Just like that bird is looking for expression to fly away. That's how your calling and your destiny is looking for expression as well. So whenever he sees anything that reminds it of the topic that is already in you, he wants to talk about that topic. Whenever he sees anything that is reminds that thing that is in you, that calling, that destiny that is in you, that that you know that uh, that wants to remind him of that thing, he wants to think about that thing. And if you, whenever you know that thing that is in you feels that there is something to read that shows and that triggers the 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 energy and the calling that is already in you, you really want to go and you know begin to read about it. And hear about it and think about it and talk about it. That's how it works. So yeah. So that's the way that that's the, the, the way it happened to that bird. That bird, you know, has to find a, an expression, you know, of its nature. So you too, there is something in you that constantly wants to find the expression of your nature. And that's what determines what you want to read about. I'm not saying, you know, there are sometimes when we are influenced by our outside world. Okay, everybody tells you that you must read medicine, you must read. So you have, you, you know, that is, that is different. It's different when it is because somebody is putting pressure on you to read about this thing or to talk about it or it's just because that is the only thing everybody talks about around you. Okay, if that is the only thing everybody talks about around you, of course, you want to talk about that same thing as well. But that is different. These are things that are coming from outside of you, you know. But what I'm talking about are things that are coming from inside of you, you know. It is another thing. It is also different when you are studying something or you are, you know, hearing something because that is what the only thing the environment talks about, the only thing that everybody is, you know, t talking about. Even though you might not really have passion or interest for it, but because you got used to it, that is something that is just attached to you from outside. But it is different when it is indwelt in you, when it is really your nature. It will trigger something stronger than what, you know, you just do because that's what everybody does. It's just like saying uh, your nature is to be alone. But you are coming from a culture where, uh, you are coming from a culture where um, everybody wants to be jovial. Everybody wants to be expressive. Everybody wants to be, you know, to be noisy. And you discover that you know, even though you are having to do it, you are doing everything, but you, you, you know, you would have preferred to be alone. You just like me, for example. Um, I got saved. I got born again in a church that uh, that is very conservative. You know, I was watching a television program, a television uh, program, and I was saved watching this man. A great man of God, great man of God, no doubt. But when I got to the church, I discovered that that church, everybody is quiet, kind of. You know, that church is like, at least that time, it was like they had a celebration of melo, uh, melo, me, me, uh, melancholism. It was like a celebration of melancholism. It was like the whole church was melancholic. I mean, if, uh, or phlegmatic, or what, what phlegmatic. It was like the old church was phlegmatic. I mean, you had to be quiet, you know, silent, you know, meek, humble, well-behaved. Just, 
walking slowly, you know, talking slowly, you know, just a, just a depressive kind of atmosphere, I'm sorry. <laughs> For me, it was a depressive kind of nature, atmosphere. So, but because I thought that that's what Christianity meant. I thought that to be born again means to always be quiet, to always be emotionless. I was even thinking at the point that to, be, to have emotion is actually to be sinful. And especially to laugh. Ooh, don't even talk about laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that if you laugh, you're in trouble. I mean, if you are laughing, you are, if to laugh, how can you joke and laugh in church? How can you be expressed? I mean, and they had scriptures to back this up that you shouldn't laugh, you shouldn't be expressive. You should, because I, I think that's because the nature of the pastor, the senior pastor there, was you know a cool man, you know, you know a little, a little bit phlegmatic maybe, or that's the way that's the part of him that people knew and melancholy kind of nature. And every ch all the pastors are trying to copy that man. All the pastors and the leaders and the, you know, everybody in the church kind of slow down and just well behaved and silent and quiet and melancholic, being reserved and all that. So, but me, who was coming from the other side of the road, you know, the other side of life, I was express, ex expressive, you know, and you know, my nature was actually more <laughs> choleric, more like what was the other thing? Sanguine. sanguine. I was, I'm, I'm sanguine, but really, and I was more expressive. So when I got to that church, I saw that everybody. I knew what I knew that I got saved in this church, and I knew that there is God here, and I knew that this experience I'm having is real. But on the other hand, I was depressed. I was only in that church, thank God, for six months. And that's, if I had been in Nigeria for longer, I would have backslid in all of love, just left the church because I would have thought that Christianity is not for me. Because I thought that Christianity is only for people who are quiet. And I couldn't be quiet. And I couldn't be, you know, emotionless. And, uh, but you see, this is because my nature, my calling, the calling of God in me, it was being suppressed and, you know, was being silenced. So even I was like that fish that was removed from the, from the, from the, from the river uh, and put in on the on the table you know if a fish is removed from the river and from the water and put uh, and, and put on the table you will not be in your nature the food will, i mean the fish will begin to jump i mean be be peaceless and be be worried and be you know restless so even though i was also quiet like them but they, they never knew that i was dying inside i was thinking oh how much more life do i still have in me left I was thinking that if I'm going, to, I, would, I, I, would, I just felt I was being suffocated. I was thinking I was going to suffocate in this church. And thank God, God took me out of the country. And I met other people that showed me uh, that, wow, so you could be expressive as a Christian. You could be a Christian and still keep your temperament. You see, some people think, some people think that, uh, you know, for you to be a Christian, you have to have a certain temperament. But no, you don't have to have a certain temperament. You don't have to have just one particular muluk. Everybody, God gave you your own temperament for you to express God in your own temperament. For you to express the nature of God and the truth of God in your own nature. You are supposed to be yourself. You are supposed to be natural. So I never knew that I could express God with my lousiness. I never knew that I could express God with my shout, with my with my noise, with my, you know, laughter, with my, you no, know, with my, uh, what do you call it, humor, and with, with my uh, uh, sanguine nature, and with my, you know, you know, I, you know, I never knew I could do that. But thank God that I met this, past, this other guy who was just the opposite, and I knew that he carried God. He carried God in him more than I did. He said, I said, that, oh, this guy that knew more God than me, so it means it's, it's, you could be normal and be yourself as a Christian. So, but sometimes, you know, some religious uh, at, you know, or atmosphere or, or environment that you find yourself in, they, they keep you in cage and they make you to think that to be a Christian means to only be like this. To be a Christian means to only read these kind of books. To be a Christian means to only talk like this. To be a Christian means to only think like this. To be a Christian means to only, you know, hear these kind of messages. 
to be a Christian means to only read these kind of books. I mean, those are controls. And those kind of control, you know, they discourage you eventually, either you like it or not. And those, that, that kind of control, they don't, only, they don't they only discourage you, but they break you and they kill, they kill the creativity and the nature of God in you. And, but really, God wants to express himself in every temperament. God wants to exp- express himself. For example, let's say love. The nature, of, the nature of God is love. God wants love to be, exp- to be expressed in all the temperaments. God wants the nature of God to be expressed both as a choleric, as in a choleric way, and he wants to use the alleric nature to express himself. God also wants to use the sanguine nature to express himself. So also God will save a phlegmatic person and use the phlegmatic nature of that person to express himself. And the same thing God will do with melancholic. God wants to find a melancholic person, put himself in him, fill himself with, with, him, with them, and, uh, and, and express themselves in their melancholic nature. So, you know, but sometimes we lose ourselves. You, we lose our inclinations. We lo- lose what our in, inner being really desires. Why? Because the outside world is so overwhelming. Sometimes we are so overwhelmed by what our environment is telling us. Sometimes we are so overwhelmed by what our parents are telling us. Sometimes we are so overwhelmed by what our school systems are telling us. Sometimes we are so overwhelmed by what our, our, uh, our environment, our society is telling us. So we don't even know who we are anymore. We lose ourselves as a result. So, so it's like that bird. The bird will always gravitate towards something that gives it freedom and liberty. The bird will always gratify towards a free, 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 free flow and free fly. The bird will always gravitate towards nature, towards ear, towards expression. That is the nature of that bird. And that's why when it sees the opportunity to come out of that cage, it takes off. It takes off. And what was, what, let's go back to the story of my rat. My rabbit and rat. Why were they running away? At least they were not supposed to fly. Rats don't fly. Yes, even though rats don't fly, but <laughs> but rats were not supposed. I mean, the bush rats were not supposed to be caged as well. They were not supposed to be put in the cage that I used to put them. <laughs> so each time I wake up in the morning, they are gone <laughs> because rats they have their own nature, their own place of abode. And their place of abode is in the on the ground. It's on the it's in the soil, and it's in the uh, you know in the bush. They are supposed to find their expression in the bush, in the in the soil, in the holes, and all that. But while I was keeping them, I was actually killing them. The same thing happens to all of us. They are killing us when they put you. They are killing you when they put you in the classroom that doesn't belong to your nature. That is not what you have been yearning for. They are killing you when they put you in the in the in the pro, under the program to be hearing uh, messages or teachings or, or lectures on topics that don't respond in your heart. They are killing you when they put you in a situation when you have to read books and just read about topics that doesn't really say anything to you, the inner calling, the inner the desires of your heart. It's killing you. And they are killing you when they force you to think about topics that doesn't relate to what is already having expression in your soul. It's killing you. So you understand that. So the, the idea of what I'm talking about today is that, you know, your calling and your destiny is actually already in you. And one of the ways that God will help you to discover them, to find expression for them, is when you begin to hear things that relate to that thing and you, you begin to, and you want to hear more when you want to hear more and more you cannot hear enough it means uh, 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 it means that you know that that is your calling and then when you want to you know not just hear about this thing but you want to talk about the same topic and that's the thing you want to talk about you cannot get yourself to get over it that is that's your calling and when you you know you, you know you want to think and you are thinking about this same topic and this is the topic you want to you feel like thinking about and that means that is your destiny. That thing is already dwelling in you. That the, the destiny is already in your soul. And we, when you want to read and hear about the same subject, it means that God has already planted that purpose, that mission, that destiny in you. And, you know, go for it. And it's a pointer to what you are supposed to become in life. By the way, if you have not yet shared this link, 
if you have not shared this message please go ahead and look for your share button go to your timeline and share the message please go and share the link go and share this message let other people also be blessed by it it might be a blessing to somebody who knows maybe someone has been looking forward to hearing this kind of teachings so go let's go share the link and um yeah and some of you are saying when do I, when do we come up i come up every day i'm here every day british time is 7 30 a.m british time and 7 p.m british time so morning and evening in the morning 7 30 is in the evening is 7 p.m the same thing with nigeria 7 30 a.m in the morning and 7 uh, p.m in the evening but in the u.s is uh 2 a 2 30 a.m so that's quite early there are 2 30 a.m in the morning uh every day and of course 2 p.m also every day so um yeah so you know if you have not been here remember the time that is the timing and some of you are asking for my email i already gave my email my email is pastor at god embassy.org pastor at god embassy.org god god embassy is one word so well uh what we're talking about today is the, that what you listen what uh, your calling could be in what you often hear or like to hear what you often like to listen to what you want to you know talk about what you want to read about what you cannot have enough of that is what your calling is now that is on one hand that is one aspect of this message which is how to discover your calling and i've been doing this for a week now so you might want to go back to some of the old recordings and you can get all the old recordings on my blog sundayadelajablog.com video blog or daily broadcast and you can also get them on my youtube page you can actually uh, get yourself registered for my youtube page and you know for, uh, it's uh, Sunday Adelaide official and the petitions will be coming to you automatically so anyway what I'm saying is so if on one hand these the things you like to think about talk about read about hear about they tell you about what you what you are called to do but on the other hand it's not just enough to be reading and thinking and talking about something I mean that is just for fun so life is not just about getting fun or having pleasure. Life is much more than that. So what you are supposed to do is that these things that you think, talk, read, and hear about, you are supposed to go beyond that. You are supposed to take those things and and uh, and, and, and go and develop them. You are supposed to you know you know develop yourself by what you like to hear, what you hear more, and use that to 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 add value to yourself. You have to develop yourself by what you like to think about. You like to think about it so that you come out with more ideas. You like to think more about it so that you'll be able to deliberate more about it and come out with ingenuity of how to do these things that you are doing better, better than ever before. You want to talk about it because you want to share your vision. So everything you want to think about, talk about, hear about, read about, all of them should now be purposeful. Everything... Everything has to be purposeful. So what you will need to do is that you will have to make them not just to be purposeful, but, you know, intentional. So you have to intentionally now go and be hearing topics on that subject so that you will be, make yourself better. And you have to be pragmatic about it so that you have become pragmatic and have more results in that, in, that, in, that, in that area. And you have to be purposeful about what you read. So you have to intentionally go about to read about, you know, that topic that particular subject until you uncover some new things until you discover yourself and you, you dis discover greater height and you read so much as so much that you know you make sure that uh, you know you 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 become the best in that subject so you have to be purposeful when you talk about your subjects and your passion so that you are talking about it to the right people you are looking for the right people to talk about it and you are talking about it with people that you are adding value to or who are adding value to you or you are talking about it to people through whom you could you know you could find your expression and you could that could you know through whom you could actually come to fulfillment and and fulfill your destiny to you know through that topic so you don't just talk about talk, 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 talk as if you don't have any work to do. You don't just go and read something and just read, read, read as if you don't have anything to, to, to do as well. But you have to be purposeful in everything you do. So if you want to write, write something. If you is writing that you like, write something that is meaningful. 
write books, write articles, write something that will contribute to the world. If you would like to, uh, to be in the room, be in the room and, you know, add value to yourself. Be alone. If you want to just be alone, be alone by, you know, doing something constructive. Not just being alone in depression, but be alone to add value to yourself, to read books, to write books, to do things that order to be creative, to give expression to your nature. So if what you would like to do is to talk, talk science to people, talk life into people, be a carrier of life, be a carrier and exchanger of destiny. You know, make sure that every word you talk gives life to people. Make sure that what you talk about is what is building people up. Make sure that what you talk about is what is, you know, making them better and what is making you better as well. Okay. I understand that there is another person that is having birthday today. Comfy, if you are having birthday today, my greetings to you, and I want to use the opportunity to congratulate you on your birthday and wish you a happy birthday. And may the grace and the hand of God rest upon you. And may a new time and a new season be established and be, be manifested in your life and destiny from today on that uh, you will come to a new height than you could ever imagine. That is comfort. Sister Comfort, happy birthday. So, so the idea is... Um, yeah, the idea is, you know, you be purposeful in whatever you want to listen to. Be purposeful in whatever your natural inclination is. Make sure that whatever your natural inclination is, you invest yourself into it. You invest your time into it. You remember the, that the investment of time and the investment of work with the combination of time and work is what actually makes a champion. So begin to invest more time in your natural inclination. Begin to invest more time in doing what you feel that is in you, that wants to find expression in you. Invest more time in it. And that's why I say, you know, the other time that, you know, sometimes we invest too much time in going to church and in doing church things and in religion because you don't have time to invest time. In, you don't have time to invest time in your destiny, in your calling, in the real thing that God has called you to do. You know, sometimes we need to go to church maybe less because you don't, you know, they are not adding value to you in the sense of making you to be better and to even become who you are supposed to become uh, quicker. You know, can you imagine if you put together all the hours that you spend in churches, it will be more than 10,000 hours. And if you put, had put 10,000 hours, let's say, in any act or in anything, you would have become the best in the world. Anything, any act, any mm, practice that you put, uh, that you invest 10,000 hours practicing, you know, that is three to six hours a day for the next 10 years. If you do that for 10 years and you practice that, you know, that will make you to be the, one of the best in the world. You will become a star. You will leave your, your legacy on, on, on the sand of history. You will, you know, you, you, will become, you will become the best. You will, you will have been able to cater for your family. You will become so successful. You know, there is no way you can invest 10,000 hours in really developing yourself, self-development in the area of business. Let's say you are, becoming, you are a businessman, that you will not become a millionaire. You will become, a, even there is, it's not just in business. Even if it is in singing, that you invest 10,000 hours in self-education and self-development and you develop yourself so that you will be so good, you become a millionaire. In nothing, no matter what you do, no matter what your inclination is, even if it is in cleaning, if you invest 10 hours of constructive development, self-development, adding value to yourself to read more, to hear more, to think more, and to speak more about it, you will discover that you will become a millionaire anyway in anything. If you could be so purposeful and so intentional in what you are doing, you become the expert in it. You become the best in it. You become better than anybody else. There is just no other way. That is a law. If you will just invest yourself in adding value to yourself, in reading more, in hearing more, studying more, researching more, and, you know, investing more of your life in that particular topic or in that particular area of life, you, there, is no way, there is no way and room for failure. There is nobody who is supposed to be failing in life if you will only be purposeful about time and labor, time and work. If you'll be able to work smart, purposefully, and work hard, 
Can you imagine if you are working and investing in the labor laboratory, if you are working in the laboratory six hours, ten hours every day for the next ten years, there's no way you will not discover. There's no way you will not come to invention. Even if you don't want to come to invention, if you are working hard enough, you will come to even more invention than you could ever imagine. That is how life is. You, I mean, it's just like that man that was talking about yesterday in the Olympics. You know, he was thinking of uh, Phelps, was my, Michael? Michael Phelps as his idol. He was thinking that he was a god. But when he started investing five, six hours into training every day, for the next eight years, the next, the following eight, eight years later, he was even beating, he beat that same person. He was thinking he was a god, a man, in flesh. He beat Michael Phelps into, into it, and he was only 20 years, 19 years old, or 21 year old, 20 year old kid. 20 year old kid, he beat the man who had been two times, three times Olympic champion. 20 times Olympic champion, really. He beat him. And he used to be his idol and his God. Why? If you follow the rules, if you follow the principles, and you will invent your, invest your life in adding value to yourself, in working hard. And that's why when I look around today at Christians, it's not surprising for me why Christians are not the Bill Gates of this world. Why Christians are not the Steve Jobs of this world. Why Christians are not the inventors. We are not the movers and shakers. They are not the ones running the world. I know why. It is understandable to me why. Because we are spending all those 10 hours we are supposed to be spending on our invention, on our discovery, on our calling, on our destiny. We are spending it just to sit down to listen to some people. To sit down to listen to other men. To just sit down in day, day in, day out. In some churches, people go to church every day. In some churches, people go to church three times a day. In some churches, people go to church five times, I mean, not a day. Some, sometimes people go to church uh, five times a week. Sometimes people go to church three times a week and just go to sit down there three hours, four hours, five hours, spending in churches without anything to show for it. If, if you want to invest, if you are called to God or to serve God and you, your calling is, you know, in the ministry, in the kingdom of God, if you invest that same hour, that amount of time in God, you know, you, you, you will not be ordinary. For example, I... Not in going to church, but in God. For example, you know, I invest, I did that myself. I, I started taking away time to be alone with God personally. And I, I started uh, spending one week. I first of all started with three days a week. So I would spend uh, 10 hours to 18 hours, sometimes, let's say in the average 14 hours in the presence of God. I lock myself up, lock myself up, uh, lock myself up. Uh, for a week, between three days and seven days. Let's calculate just five days. If I lock myself up for a week for five days, I'm, and I spend, let's say, the average of ten hours in the presence of God for 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 one month. I mean, for that is one year. That's one week a month. That's twelve, twelve weeks in a year. But every day, ten hours. How many hours do we have? One twenty hours. So 120 hours. By, do, I, by the time I did that for eight years, I was already in another realm. You know, before, you know, how many hours was that? 9,600 hours. 9,600 hours. So that's about 10,000 hours. By the time I spent 10,000 hours just being alone with God, my life was just revolutionized. Let me tell you what are the products. First of all, my ministry just went to another level. Secondly, before, I used to look for God. I used to look for God. How do you find God? I used to, before I go to preach, for example, every day I'll be praying two, three hours, even six hours, so that I would just go and pray. I would just to be able to have anointing and feel anointing. Before I could feel the anointing of God, I would need to pray six hours or four hours or five hours just to feel the presence of God and the anointing of God. But when, once I started doing this, and I did, the first year, second year, I didn't feel anything much. But once I did it for eight years, I invested 10 hours, 10,000 hours, but once I invested 10,000 hours in the presence of God like that, I don't need to pray to feel God anymore. I don't need to, mm, to huh? I don't need to seek to pray to, to feel the anointing. I don't need to, you know, fast to pray the presence of God. I, I, it was like I was immersed into God. It was like, you know, my God is my skin. I live in God. It's like some people are saying, oh, you know, can you leave God or can you fall away from God? It cannot happen for me because I am so deep in God. I see God every day. I see Jesus every day. 
you know, I am not perfect. I'm still a man. I can still make mistakes. I can still fail. But it doesn't change my relationship with God anymore. I hear God. I friendly with God. I have the mind of God. Just because I invested that 10,000. But if you just invest 10,000, I was just going to church for eight years. Going to church like that as well, 10 years. There's nothing to show for it. If you say, what is the result of my own investment of being alone with God? Everybody sees the, inve- the, the result. The result is worldwide. There is no way you will not be worldwide. There is no way you will not be revolutionary. There is no way you will not be global. If you really invest yourself in your calling and your destiny. If, I mean, if, I mean, just like that, you know, the, okay, for example, we had, uh, you know, some, some boxers. Uh, we had a Nigerian boxer that, you know, everybody was thinking was going to knock out his second in, second in, second in the world, uh, second boxer in the Olympics, second rating in the Olympics, that this Nigeria was going to win and, and, and knock him out. I said it would never happen because this guy has been training since the age of five. And has been training for two, three hours every day minimum. And now it's like 20-something. So over 20, like 25 years, so like 20 years, he has been training for two, three hours. This man has 10,000, over 10,000 hours of training. He's not ranking to be the second best for, for the fun. And this, my own, our own Nigerian guy, just became a boxer at the age of 15 or 18 or something. He was a footballer before. Just because he had big punch and he's going to train for two years, he's going to win the Olympics, you cannot. There are skills that must be developed. There are laws that cannot be broken. So this is a law. But what we do, we go and go to church and go to church and go to, or go to work, go to work, go to work. But we are not investing ourselves in our calling, in our elementary calling, or in our basic calling, in our basic, you know, you know, gifting that God has given to us. And as a result, because we don't invest in our destiny, we don't become anything. We only end up living for survival. We only end up struggling. We only end up working for salary. We only end up, you know, looking for job. The reason why you have to look for job is because you did not invest in yourself, in your basic gifting, in your calling, in your destiny. And you did not put that 10,000 minimum of hours of self for the self-development and self, you know, self, self, uh, self, uh, you know, self uh, cultivation. You did not develop yourself. And because you did not invest in yourself, you did not develop yourself, you did not, you know, purposefully, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, make yourself who you are supposed to be. That's, there's no shock. There's no surprise that you are a beggar. Because any, anybody who's looking for salary is a beggar. Any person who's working for salary is a beggar as well. You're just a beggar because you did not invest in your destiny, in your, in your calling. So, so the idea is find out what your calling is. Find out what your natural inclination is. And then go ahead and invest your hours to develop, to be the best in it. To invest your uh, the life in it. To get as much skills through what you read, through what you hear, through what you study, through what you think about. I mean, if we let, let people and put people under this rule and make them to, to, uh, to, you know, to invest their lives, in, they will be, we, will have, we will have scientists everywhere. We will have you know, inventors everywhere. We will have successful people everywhere. We will have great, great people everywhere. But if we just conserve them in the church and just tell them, come to church, come to church, come to church, what is the gauge? What is the parameter that they are coming to church is actually, you know, helping them to fulfill their purpose and destiny? What is the parameter? What are the factors that will show us that just by them appearing in church, they are fulfilling destiny? That that has added value to them and that that, that has improved them, that it has improved their calling, that it has improved the, the, the calling of God upon them. What, what are the parameters? What are the, what are the proofs? What are the products that the people have produced? What are the services that they have produced to show us that coming to church, just coming to church blindly has, has made them to become who God created them for in the first place? So you need to find out. That's why this teaching is one, one is so important. Where is the book? I didn't bring the book. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I showed you my book yesterday, and you have a link to that book here on the in the. You have a link to the book here in the in the in this link. Go and find that book. Who am I? Who am I? 
who am I? Go and f I wrote a book like that. And that's what I'm teaching about this, the audience. Wow. Wow. So go and find that book or go and listen to all this series of teachings. We started since last week. Go to uh, sundayadelajablog.com and you will see all the recordings. You go to sundayadelajablog.com. You will see the video uh, broadcast. All the messages are there. All the daily broadcasts. All the messages are there as well. Or you go to uh, my, my, my YouTube page, Sunday Adelaide Official, and you see all the recordings. You find out who you are, find out your calling, and then begin to invest your life. Put, uh, calculate 10,000 hours. You know, how many years would that take you? Invest that in studying, in adding value to yourself, and you become who you need to become. This is it. This is the book. You can go and buy it on Amazon. You can buy it on Amazon or on Okada, Okada Books or, you know, just the internet. Just go look for it. You'll find it. Well, my time is coming to an end. So I want to ask you to uh, write what you are thinking, what you are receiving, what you are getting from this message. So I want to hear your opinion. I want to hear your 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 thoughts about this message let me hear your thoughts please let me hear your thoughts and go and share the link if you have not shared the link yet go share the link as well christ grace ambassador say pastor all the time i listen to you i'm blessed i'm very encouraged to become more proactive in what the lord has put in my heart thank god thank god Rachel Igbinovia said, this is so true. Like my pastor would always say, we ought to learn to be in the presence of God, not to be quick to give God a list of our needs, but to be still in His presence and listen. God wants to pour a lot into us through His Holy Spirit, if only we will just be still. Thank you so much, man of God. My following your live cast at this time, I believe, is timely. By Yina Sherrod says, wow, anyone working for a salary is a beggar. That's so true. God bless me. <laughs> oh, Yee said, this is it. God help me. Life-changing teaching. Toki Oyene said, well done, pastors Adelaja, for the work you do with prisoners in Ukraine. Nkem Dike said, on point, sir, practical reality which we must apply in our lives if we impart our word. Rochelle White says, I love how you teach life-changing principles. It's magnificent. Thank you, Rochelle. Oluwato, you say, this is a revolution. Thank you, sir. Adeyeye says, this is so practical. Thank you, Pastor. Amy Bobby say you are really a godsend. Keep up, keep it up. God bless you. Oyenye Okoro say, Pastor, people go to church every day here. There must be one program or the other. And if don't if they don't come, they will miss God that day. <laughs> That's rubbish. Toki says people go to the church to all church services including weekly ones because their pastors make them feel guilty about not attending church services they will make people guilty for not joining a church department wow those are that is captivity that is slavery people need to be set free glory baye say thank you pastor sunday this is a timely message this is my third time watching you live i've learned so much Thank you for serving in this capacity. May your cup continuously run over. It's 3.30 a.m. here. Wow, that's in America, I guess. Uh, you, Shara, Sharia, say thank you, Pastor, for your sincere and inspirational messages. Thank you. O Ojekwa Israel, say Nigerian Pastor will tear you apart for this. But you... <laughs> Christ's great ambassador say, I have a very strong belief that we can make life successful and joyful now through empowerment of people. My passion is to create an environment of justice, peace, and joy in respect of all dignity. I also believe strongly in the culture of teamwork and authentic collaboration that empowered everyone 
to have freedom to deploy themselves in achieving common goal with good success. So I read about leadership. Beautiful, beautiful. Rachel says, invest in yourself. Be purposeful in labor. Powerful words by Pastor Sunday. Ireti says, sometimes you need to go to church less to excel in what you need to. Yes, Pastor, I agree with you, sir. Far more happy said, I will save this teaching for my kids who are five and three. This is so powerful. Wow, that's good. That's good. Nkem DK said, yeah, true. So caught up in church activities and we are not taking our word for God. Toki says, I love this. Pastor Sunday Adelaja, you are one of the best genuine pastors in the world. Yes, the best thing one can do is to do things that fulfills one's calling. Lorima to Ruva say just can't get over the birds and bush rat story. Couldn't laugh enough <laughs> because I can see me in that story. Thank you for the timely word. <laughs> Felix okay Neovo said I'm so blessed today and challenged to spend more time in God's presence. Thank you, Pastor. Amy Bobby say, Pastor, I feel like pushing myself forward to bring out all the best in me. Thank you once again, Pastor. Kennedy Festus, a day without your words is like life without air. <laughs> May God bless you, Pastor. <laughs> Apostle Yomi on our deeper said, I can't stop listening to you on this topic. The Lord has given you this key of teaching to change the world. Keep doing it. I'm blessed every morning hearing you. More, more grace to you, sir. If you almost said a powerful message, I need to go back and listen to it again and again. Got Luak Gash Shual. Hi, Pastor. I know that you have power to ask God to heal those who are sick and those who have been conquered by evil place. I'm asking you to help pray for the peace in South Sudan. I agree with you right now for South Sudan and I establish peace. The serenity of God, the peace of God to come. And any lesson that that country needs to learn, let them learn in fast and let the world cease in Jesus name. Bukola Nihi said, wow, this, my, this is my blowing. Wish I've heard this a long time ago, but it's not too late, Pastor. Thank you. Nkem DK, I love you, sir. You are a life-transforming mentor and coach. You kickstart my mornings with so much energy, which carries me through the entire day. Listening to your teachings turns my creativity on. Thank God. Paul Shingongo said, I am Paul Shingongo. Sir, your teachings have really blessed me. I'm in Zambia and I'm really being impacted. Olaito, Olaide says, your words have been blessing me to me, sir. Learn from you today how to be in the presence of God and develop my inner mind. God bless you more. David F. is a big ignorantly addicted to religious activity and inherited tradition that destroyed people than the devil. Thank you, sir. Toki said, thank you, Pastor. This message is so rich. I think it will even bless the teenagers who are just starting up their lives even more. God bless. Vida Kodua said, blessings, Pastor. You brought the book. I am waiting. Oh, they have brought the book. I'm waiting for it to be sent to me to read. Amazing. I was late today. Okay. Shola Ojewu is a Nigerians can't wait to welcome this revolutionary approach to Christianity. 
Jude Pray say, your message sat me up, Pastor. Thank you for this revolutionary teaching. All right, guys, you know, it's been nice to be with you. I want to encourage you to go share the link and, uh, you know, go listen to the message again and again. And I'll be back tonight again. I'll be back tonight again. Are your books on ebook? Yes, the books are on ebooks on Amazon and on Okada, Okada books. So you can get the ebooks and the physical book. So, well, I'll be back tonight. Uh, that is uh, 7 p.m. British time and 7 p.m. Uh, Nigerian time and 2 p.m. Uh, American time, to Eastern time. God bless you guys. Uh, it was nice to be with you. And uh, have a wonderful day. Bye.